The Pastronaut. I love it. How do you like the nickname? I love it. It's been cool. It's a uh, cool play on words. I got Astro, Astro Dobbs from my time at University of Tennessee. So now Pastronaut, I mean, it just makes sense with all the NASA and space, aviation and everything. So we're taking it and we're running with it. That's a great story. How would you describe the ride you've been on this season, but especially since you were trading on Halloween? Yeah, it's been, it's been, I think, like, to say crazy, like, that's obviously um, a short word, but I don't think that truly encapsulates all the emotions and um, just how um, crazy it really has been over the, shoot, over the past, throughout this year and definitely over the past couple weeks. Um, but I will say, you know, coming to Minnesota and just getting entrenched in, in the culture here, being around the people here has been uh, tremendous for me, man, and I'm really getting my footing now, and, and we're hitting our stride as a, as a team, and you know, just coming together playing really good football. And, um, you know, I've said it, you know, I, I got on a moving train. You know, the culture and, and the direction the team was moving, they were already going in that direction before I got here, and so I've been able to step on this moving train and, and continue to join into the good football. Dude, how much is your head spinning right now? <laughs> I will say it's uh, much less than it was about a week ago, you know, a week ago just coming into town and all the little things like just trying to figure out logistics of moving, getting traded, all those emotions, and then also, you know, meeting a new team, new offense, and then figuring out, all right, are you playing this weekend? What's going to happen with the situation? There's a lot going on. But to have a week under me to get settled, um, you know, to go through a full week of preparation, go out and play good football on Sunday, man, I'm, I'm really getting my footing. and. Uh, so head spinning a little less now than it was, but it's a process, and yeah, I'm just embracing every second of it. We'll get back to the football part of it in a second. I want to talk about the life part because mm -hmm. like, life be life in for you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, life comes at you fast. <laughs> I believe it's five teams in 45 weeks. Can you speak to and describe for the average person what the life aspect, the real life at home aspect or impact uh, of all these moves is like? Yeah, um, it's. I wouldn't say it's for the faint of heart. You know, it's uh, a lot of living out of suitcases, a lot of unknown situations, right? A lot of um, up in the air, you know. Um, I get jealous of my parents sometimes because they say things. And I'm like, well, you know, you guys have been living in the same house for 20 years and I don't have a, a, a home per se because I've been jumping around over the past several weeks because um, that's, that's just the nature of the beast. But I will say, you know, um, Last year, when I kind of put myself out on a limb uh, with how the situation shook out in, in Cleveland, um, to then go to another team to get picked up by the Titans for my first time opportunity to start. And then I guess that really kind of started this whole um, process of craziness over the last 45 weeks. When I did that, I recognized that my journey was going to be different and that the life aspect might not look super comfortable uh, for the time being. but. I was willing to sacrifice that for the opportunity to go out and get a chance to start and play the sport I love and be in the position that I've dreamt of being in um, since I started playing football when I was five years old. What is the longest and most settled that you have felt longest, in your professional career? Um, I would say when I got drafted, I was in Pittsburgh for two full years and up until week one of the season that I got traded to Jacksonville. So yeah. that's probably the longest tenure I've had I've had in yeah. one place where I had the same apartment the entire time. My stuff didn't move out and yeah. move back in and everything. Um, I was in Jacksonville for a year. I was in Pittsburgh for another two years. So I guess that's the second most settled I've been. But um, yeah, since year five, um, after that season, man, it's everything's been up in the air. It's been, you know, when I, um, after my fifth season, I was injured, I was out for the year. Um, and I recognized that maybe it was time for a change of scenery. And so um, I knew, I didn't know where I was gonna sign. I didn't know what the situation was gonna look like, but I knew it was gonna look different um, and it wasn't gonna be as stable. And like since that point, it's, it's kind of been the most unstable um, living situations, life situations that you could go through. But hey, I, w I really, like people genuinely ask me like, would you change it? Um, are you upset with anything? Like I wouldn't change it for the world. No. Each opportunity I've had has just been a building block for the next one, and I've learned so much. They've prepared me so much, not only as a football player, but as a person off the field of just how I process things and just how kind of just accept everything that life throws at me. And 
um, and just how also I stay more present in the current opportunity I'm in. Yeah, because I was going to ask you that, as a matter of fact, because do you ever, you know, feel uh, discouraged or frustrated along the way with all the changes? And if so, how do you work through those feelings? Yeah, I think like those are natural emotions to have when things, if something happens that isn't going your way. Um, I mean, there has been those moments, like, but people have also asked me the question of, was there ever a moment like where you wanted to give up or that you, um, you just kind of just wanted to throw in the towel or just feeling that much discouraged to do that. And I've never gotten that feeling, no matter how crazy it's gotten, um, just because like, just the opportunity to be in the NFL, one is a blessing in itself. And then, you know, every time I look around, like there's always opportunities for growth and improvement. And so my goals that since the day I stepped in the NFL was whatever the role I'm in to maximize that role. And by maximizing that role, that will open up the door for opportunities for your role to grow. And I think I've shown by maximizing the smallest roles I've been given, um, they've continued to grow into larger roles and opportunity and ultimately have, you know, given me the opportunity to be sitting where I am today. Mm -hmm. How has your path to this point prepared you to perform the way you have under these circumstances? I would say uh, my path to this point has literally built me for these circumstances. You know, every single opportunity I've gotten, not only in the NFL, but even thinking back to high school, thinking back to college, just always has been the same opportunities people have seen me thriving in in the NFL that were the opportunities where the odds might be pitted against you. You know, my first time. Starting in high school on varsity, I came in in the second quarter because the team was down like 14 to zero and they only wanted me to play a quarter. We scored a touchdown and the coach left me in. I never came out. Um, going to college, very similar. You know, I was supposed to register twice. My register got pulled in the middle of the Alabama game both years, went on and played well. And um, that kind of thrust me into the starting role during my time at the University of Tennessee. And, you know, even looking back at my time in Pittsburgh, like obviously I was behind. Ben Roethlisberger for five seasons where, as we all know, he's a Hall of Famer and he's tough as nails, so he's going to be out there on Sundays. But when he did miss snaps, it, was, it wasn't like, you know, we were up 21 points or the coaches weren't expecting you to do anything. It was, you know, my first play was on the five-yard line coming out, second and 15, on the road against the Baltimore Ravens and threw a deep over to Juju for a first down. That was my only play of the game, but it was a huge play and kind of just being thrust into that action. So I've had banked reps that, you know, outside people that haven't always followed my journey, mm -hmm. they might not see them, but the bank, I think those banked reps of being put in those situations have given me the correct disposition and have prepared me to be able to go out and no matter what the odds, odds are stacked against myself personally or the team, man, just to go out, compete, play free, and be ready to make the most of the opportunity. Yeah, I was gonna say, man, why do teams keep putting you in <laughs> position? Like whether whether it's eight days uh, before you start for the Titans last year, I think it was 17 days before you the opening day started for the Cardinals this year. We saw what you, you what you've been doing lately with Minnesota. What is it about you where teams just know, like you know, Josh can handle this? <laughs> um, I guess, I guess it's a good rep rep reputation to have, you know, to know you can handle the uncomfortable situations. Um, you know, I just think. Each situation has been extremely unique. You know, uh, getting signed in Tennessee with the opportunity to start was kind of the goal I was kind of setting myself up for at the end of last season. And so going and making the most of that situation, I believe, has shown teams that uh, if those opportunities do come, like obviously you know, for me personally, you want like something more stable, but if those opportunities are out there, like Josh can come in and handle um, something that, you know, most people perceive can't. And so, um, yeah, you know, I think that's a good rep reputation to have. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, like, you know, Tom Brady, I think he always says it best. Like, if a team puts you out there on that field and you're not ready for the opportunity, they may never put you out there again. Mm -hmm. And um, I really prepare like that, like, no matter what the opportunity is, no matter what the odds are of that opportunity, to be ready to make the most of it, and it will just open the door for the next one. What is it about Joshua Dobbs that makes him so adaptable? Uh, I would say uh, my mindset, my disposition. You know, I'm a student of the game. I'm always learning. Um, but I also, like, enjoy the uncomfortable situations. Like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't run from them. You know, when uh, there are those un uncomfortable, adverse situations, whether it's in preparation, in the complex, or in the middle of the game, man, like, 
Uh, I enjoy those situations. I enjoy being in them. I enjoy being the problem solver that's out there on the field and being put in the situation that he has to go out and solve the problem to help the team win. Like, I really embrace that role. And um, I think, you know, my teammates have seen that. Um, and they've been able to rally behind that. And so, you know, being in those roles, being in those situations, I think that's the nature of being um, in the quarterback position. And uh, when you are in those roles, man, like the, the ones that are able to make the most of those uh, opportunities are the ones that at the end of the day are able to reap the benefits of that success. Going back to Halloween, you go from being told you're going to be the starter to being benched but not being traded only to be traded. Uh, and yet you seemed to take it in stride. If you did, why? How were you able to take it in stride? Yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for the Arizona Cardinals organization. I have a lot of respect for JG, Drew, and Izzy. I um, mean, I was in Cleveland all camp, and you know, and they called me a week before the season to be their day one starter. After, obviously, the reputation that I had with Drew and Izzy, so JG trusting that after not, you know, ever seeing me throw a football or, you know, meeting me in person, he trusted um, as a first year head coach for me to be the guy he was going to roll out with mm -hmm. on the first Sunday of the season. So I have a lot of respect for them and the opportunity that they gave me. And having that opportunity, you know, obviously gave me the opportunity to be here in Minnesota um, and be sitting where I am today. So I'm very thankful for them for, you know, trading for me from Cleveland, no matter if it was, if I saw it coming or didn't, man, like the opportunity to go out and be a day one starter is, is a dream of mine that I've had since, as I said, since I started playing football. So um, I have a lot of respect for them and I understand where they are as an organization, man. And and they, they're gonna make the decisions and I respect that and I'm the player, but when they told nine to go out there, I went out and put my best foot forward. And so, you know, that opportunity opened the doors to be here in Minnesota, man. And uh, now it's, you know, here with this team. And as I said, getting onto this train, keeping the ball moving in the right direction. We have a ton of momentum. You know, obviously, because the offense is playing well, defense is playing well, special teams is playing well, just playing good, complimentary football. And at the end of the day, you know, I will continue to be a catalyst to help this team win. What did those eight games in Arizona do for you to set you up for this? Yeah, you know, just just redefine my process. Like, hey, like, what is it to be a starting quarterback in the NFL? Yeah. You know, watching a lot of guys do it from afar, from up close, it's different now when you are that guy on Sunday going out and taking each snap. You're the guy on Wednesday that no matter – what happened the week before, you're showing up, running the offense, getting the team prepared and ready to go uh, for the next Sunday. So just refining that process, man. It was all tremendously valuable banked reps of, you know, leading that team, you know, running offense, getting those, getting those reps out there on the field that at the end of the day, you know, the more football you play, the better you're going to be. Mm -hmm. And so for the first five, five and a half, six years of my career, like most of the football I played was in the preseason. Um, just based on the nature of my situation. So getting a chance to get those reps only allowed me to be a better quarterback, only allowed me to prepare better, and then ultimately allow me to be a better football player. Mm -hmm. uh, so speaking of reps, uh, you had zero <laughs> when you stepped <laughs> on the field against Atlanta. Uh, you didn't know names, you didn't know cadences, you didn't know uh, play calls or plays or, or concepts uh, barely, and yet you go in and perform because uh, it's not rocket science, right? <laughs> <Not> <laughs> Which brings me. But, but I wonder <laughs> what is the correlation between the uh, the discipline, uh, the time management, mm -hmm. the study habits, all the things you developed uh, as a student, uh, a 4.0 uh, aeronautical engineering, <laughs> aerospace engineering uh, student at Tennessee, mind you. Uh, but all those habits, how do they correlate to allowing you to prepare and perform the way that you have? Yeah, um, the habits, man, like that is the biggest thing that has prepared me to, you know, be a successful NFL quarterback. The habits of studying and having to consume a large amount of information very quickly, but also decipher like what's necessary to accomplish the task, yeah. which is ultimately going out there on Sunday and playing fast and not being handcuffed by the amount of information that you're presented and, you know, what's not necessary. And so, you know, in school, man, like, I spent a lot of hours in the library. I think I closed down the library almost every single day of my college career. Um, but those habits of just being able to take the information, decipher it, retain it, and then go out and act on it, um, even though obviously engineering concepts and football aren't always related, but the process of preparation are extremely related. And 
Uh, I still rely on those habits now um, because, you know, um, as, I, as I talk about, like, one opportunity always sets you up for the next one. Like, when I got traded from Pittsburgh to Jacksonville, it was very similar. Um, I got traded uh, when Nick Foles went down and Gardner Minshew was preparing for his first start. And so getting there on a Tuesday with them saying, hey, like, you're dressing on Sunday, you could have to play. Um, I didn't play because Gardner tore it up and Minshew Mania uh, yeah. was rocking that year. Uh, but, you know, just going through that process and learning those study habits of how do I learn a whole offense, a whole game plan when I get there on a Tuesday to be prepared to go on a Sunday allowed me to be able to repeat that same process last week and be ready even though I wasn't getting the reps um, in preparation for Atlanta. So the habits I learned in college mounted with the situations I've been in throughout my career, man, have always continuously allowed me to be prepared for whatever the NFL throws my way. You ate every meal at the facility mm -hmm. last week. Uh, what else have you done uh, to get up to speed to make up for lost time? Yeah, the biggest thing I've done is, you know, just ask as many questions as possible. Like, just be really open with my communication, whether it's with KOC, whether it's with Chris O'Hare, whether it's with Grant. But, you know, I also want to give a shout out to, like, the QB room. Like, just the amount of knowledge that's in that room of guys that have been here from, obviously, Kirk Cousins to Sean Mangan to Nick Mullins to Jaron Hall. Um, and, you know, a lot of times after practice, it's those unseen hours where we're just chilling in the QB room, whether we're watching tape of the opponent or whether I'm just like drawing the plays and the game plan on the board and asking him about the different nuances of the offense. They've been a, a gr tremendous resource to me. And um, I'm thankful to be able to be in such a good environment, good culture where those guys are finding ways to contribute and help out the new guy, uh, <laughs> even though I just got here, helping me go out and, and play well and succeed on Sunday. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, we saw what appeared to be somebody giving you directions to the home <laughs> locker room <laughs> this past game. What's your favorite new guy moment? Oh, man, that was hilarious. I saw that after the game. Um, well, I got to my phone and people were sending it to me. They're like, you didn't know where the locker room was? And so people were like, don't you go there every single day? But, you know, obviously we're not at the stadium, we're at our complex. So that was the first time seeing the home side of the uh, U.S. Bank Stadium. So that, that, that one is probably my favorite. That one and, you know, not having a car for like the first week. So just trying to figure out transportation, staying at the hotel mm. for about a week and a half. But being shown where the locker room is on game day was was probably the funniest, especially since the cameras call it. Uh, do you know your way around the building? Yeah. I do know my way around the building. Okay. Yeah. So you haven't been lost in the facility. That's good. That's a good start. Yes. Um, are you still staying at the hotel? I am not staying at the hotel. Okay. I, I was moved out um, Friday before the Saints game. Okay. So we got a little we got a little space from the complex. Got, right. our, got our own spot and everything. So things are looking. Car came in as well. Okay. That day. So things are looking up. Did the furniture that you had just gotten in Arizona? Are you sending that here? What are you doing with that furniture? I don't even know. We're still <laughs> we're still trying to plan all that out. It is still in Arizona yeah. um, at this point. So my parents came up for the game. My parents, they travel to every single game. They're always in attendance. So they came up to Minnesota, flew back to Atlanta, then they're flying out to Arizona uh, this week to, to pack up the house that just got moved into in Arizona and then probably do storage we'll figure something out but that that's probably that's pretty low on the priority list at this point so it sounds like you're feeling relatively speaking settled yes. a little settled feeling settled feeling comfortable feeling at home uh, big shout out to everyone in the Vikings for for helping it be a seamless transition but our feet are definitely under us at this point you've been in a lot of situations what feels special about this one I would say just I would say just the culture and the vibe in the building, like coming in and uh, whether it's the players, the staff, the coaches, just how everyone is uncovering every single stone to be successful on Sunday, man. It's It's been awesome to be a part of, even though I've only been here for two weeks, you know, whether it's you know, going through the game plans with the offensive staff, you know, Saturday before the game or watching guys getting extra work after practice or like seeing how guys are, you know, staying, up on things and taking care of their bodies. Like guys enjoy being in the complex, they enjoy being around each other, they enjoy finding ways to, to figure out how to prepare to be ready to go on Sunday. And then ultimately, I think that leads to when the, when the lights are on, when, when the game comes, that guys are ready to figure out how to win football games each and every week. So 
Um, I've enjoyed it, man. Like, I'm still learning as I go. I still probably have a lot to learn of different nuances of the offense. Um, but we're only going to get better as we continue to get more banked rep. How are you coming with learning everybody's names? I'm pretty good on that now. I had um, had a headshot list I was going through at home throughout the week last week. But I know, I know my teammates. I know my teammates. You know, just being able to be around them, obviously, now for another extended week with less going on uh, from a live standpoint and getting a chance to meet everyone um, has been awesome. They, they've been they've been open arms with me coming in here and different guys coming up, introducing themselves, talking about ball, talking about life, being helpful uh, with anything that I need, man. So I got some great teammates and I definitely, definitely know their names for sure. You're processing so much information so quickly on such short notice. Have you had a chance to step back and truly process what you're doing right now? <laughs> um, a little bit, a little bit. Like I have had a chance to lift my head up a little bit, come up from air. Um, you know, I learned like during my time in Arizona, right? Like, as I said, you know, being a, a starting quarterback has always been the goal at the end of the day. And so a couple of times, even when I was staying in the hotel out there, I had to take a ch second to sit in the car and, and just embrace everything, embrace the moment and stay in the moment. And, you know, having that perspective then has given me the same perspective now of, you know, whenever I leave or get back to the hotel room last week or now get back to the apartment of just taking a second to take it all in, um, enjoy the moment, man, enjoy, recognize how far you've come in the past year, right? But also recognize how much further you have to go and be excited about that process and just enjoy every single step of it. What do you think you are showing the rest of the league? No, I think I'm showing the rest of the league of really, you know, everything I expected of myself, you know, that, you know, I am a starting quarterback in the National Football League and I can go out and I can play football with the best of them, uh, give my team, no, whether it's on short notice or long notice, a chance to come up, come out and win um, every single time we step on the field. And, um, you know, it's been a long time coming to be in this position. Uh, if you had asked me when I was drafted, if, is this what my NFL career looked like? I probably definitely would not have said yes, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for this opportunity. And at the end of the day, man, I'm gonna do everything I can to make the most of it. I saw you say where uh, this is a tremendous story to tell. This is gonna be a tremendous story to tell. A book or a movie if somebody would buy it, which by the way, I think somebody <laughs> would. Uh, what will be the moral of your story, the message of your story? Yeah, never give up. Never give up. I know that can sound cliche, man, but I think, you know, on everyone's journey, we all have high goals. We all have high aspirations. And at the end of the day, we all are faced with forms of adversity, you know, whether it's mental, physical, whatever, however that looks like. But at the end of the day, man, if you're willing, I always say, if you're willing to sacrifice, you're willing to work hard enough at the end of the day, and you're willing to make whatever your goals and dreams are the top priority, that no matter how long it takes, you'll, you'll be able to reach the top of the mountain. And um, that's been my journey, man. Like, there's been times where things look bleak. There's been times where, you know, my role or my spot on the depth chart uh, wasn't to my liking or wasn't what I thought of myself. And you know, at the end of the day, man, I, as I said, I embrace whatever role I'm given because I know embracing that role and making the most of it is only opening the doors for bigger roles and opportunity to ultimately achieve that final end goal. So, uh, man, I'm still grinding. I'm still working, man. I'm not complacent with where I am today. Because um, I know, one, I can continue to grow and play better football than I have. And and also, I recognize that at the end of the day, being complacent, man, just we're only slow down this train, and that's not what we're trying to do. So um, never give up on yourself. Always keep that unwavering self-confidence in your skills and ability and uh, be willing to sacrifice for your dreams and your goals. That's a great story. All right, before I let you go, man, and get back to studying, uh, by the way, you ever get – the playbook's confused. At all? Is there any overlap at all? Or? There, there is a little overlap between playbooks. Um, that is the hardest part. Like in some offenses, one word means this, yeah. and then that same word can mean something completely different. So, as you can imagine, when you're calling the play, it's very important not to get those mixed up. Um, and so, my process of making sure I don't is I probably play the game in my head probably ten times before it even gets to game day, just going through the call sheet. 
you know, making sure I've asked every single question possible, but also making sure I know it like the back of my hand so that when game time comes, you know, I'm out there thinking I can just go out and play. Um, even though there might be some crossover, some correlation, some fuzziness that I had on Wednesday, but by playing the game and, you know, exercising all those demons throughout the week, when game time comes, man, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that I know what to do. That's fascinating. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll save my last question after this. Cause you seem to have more than 24 hours in a day because <laughs> your capacity is incredible. So I understand that, you know, in addition, uh, to being, uh, an aerospace engineer, um, and obviously a professional quarterback, you're also the president of the board of directors for the Tennessee Alumni Association. Yes. Like, the fact you have time for anything else <laughs> is crazy. What else are you into besides, you know, football right now and, and engineering? Yeah, so right now it's obviously all football. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like off the field, obviously, uh, University of Tennessee, um, those are my people. So I'm the president of the Alumni Board of Directors, started the Extraordinary Dodds Foundation, give back to every area uh, of this country and it's quickly growing. That has supported me in my yeah. story, man. Like Knoxville, Tennessee, Alpharetta, Georgia, Pittsburgh, um, Cleveland, and the list is growing very rapidly and quickly. Um, but you know, in the off season, the next goal of mine, I actually had it mapped out for this season, but it got put on hold. I want to get my pilot's license. So I'm trying to learn how to fly. So um, yeah, man, like I, I'm a man of a, a lot of uh, interests and passions. Renaissance, whether, man. Yeah, but um, I understand, you know, when, when it's time to focus on the main thing. And so um, being able to prioritize and compart compartmentalize the different areas of my life, uh, obviously uh, is exciting because um, you can make the most of every single opportunity, but it's really cool to have other interests and passions um, outside of ball because it keeps you refreshed and rejuvenated for when football is the main thing. Oh, you know, you're a great mo role model in that regard. Okay, last question, I promise, so you can go and focus on the yeah. main thing. Got to do the Creed shout out. Yeah. How much higher can y'all <laughs> take this? <laughs> Man, if we stay on our path, we can definitely take it higher. Um, and I think the cool part is like, Everyone's just focused on the next opportunity. Like, we understand that, and I said it in my press conference last week, you know, this story is amazing, uh, but at the end of the day, if you don't put in the work, you don't prepare for the next opportunity, then no one cares what you did last week. Yeah. And so with that mindset, man, we're taking this thing one, one week at a time because we know we're gonna continue getting team's best shot. So we can't overlook anyone. We have to be prepared each and every Sunday to go out, put our best foot forward, take care of business, repeat process the next week. So um, how far can this thing go? The time will tell, but as long as we stay focused and locked in to the work and the preparation and the journey, man, like the story will write itself. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate Thank you. you. Get it with Michael Smith, presented by The Farmer's Dog. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.